Hello everyone, welcome to BISP trainings. My name is Faiza Alam. Uh, in today's session, we will be uh, knowing about the transaction cycle. I mean, how a transaction uh, process uh, takes place from recording till its reporting. So, in our previous session, we have uh, uh, we got to know about uh, the transaction, and we have also taken an example of. Uh, uh, two journal entries that were a simple journal entry and a compound journal entry in which uh, we had taken uh, an example of uh, sales and an expense. So today also we will be having an overview of the transaction cycle but from a different transaction point of view. So let's start now. So we have uh, taken here the same example that we have taken in our previous session. Like a company that deals in electronic goods has started its business on February 2022 uh, with a capital of 2 lakh. So we have to pass the journal entry for these transactions. Uh, as you know that uh, we in, the, in our previous session we have taken an example of sales. So our first example over here is goods sold for cash worth 50,000 on 20th March. Uh, so this is a sales transaction, but today we do, we are not going to uh, take this example. So we will further move ahead. Out of which goods worth rupees twenty thousands have been returned uh, on twenty fifth March twenty twenty two. So this is the transaction that we are going to take today. Uh, like uh, the sales that were made for fifty thousands out of uh, and from that sales due to some reasons due to some quality issues and all the goods for uh, twenty thousands have been returned. So this is a sales return transactions. The sales that we have done is uh, being returned in the business again. So we have to pass a journal entry for this. This is a sales return transaction. The other transaction that we have uh, is uh, revenue received. Revenues, as we all know that it is uh, opposite of uh, expenses that we have taken in our previous session. So revenues received on 27th March 2022. Uh, this is also, uh, we have to pass a compound entry for it. Like two uh, revenues have been received like interest and the service revenue for the amount of 10,000 and 5,000. So these are the two transactions that we will be taking uh, in our today's session. So one thing to note over here is that uh, if, if we take a simple journal entry example, so in the normal accounting that we, uh, we normally do is that uh, in which a sales account, sales return account is being debited with 20,000 and the cash account is credited. And in the second one, cash account has been debited and the interest and the service revenue accounts are being credited. So uh, we can see that uh, in the accounting, there are three kinds of uh, accounts like the personal account, real account and nominal account. So cash is falling under the real account and these revenues are falling under the nominal account. So uh, all the three accounts uh, have their own rules like personal account says that debit the receiver and credit the giver and we do not have to do anything with it. So the second account that is a real account uh, as we are dealing in this transaction like cash. So that account says that uh, debit what comes in and credit what goes out. So you can see that in the sales return transaction as uh, we are uh, having a sales return. So cash is obviously going out. So we are crediting the cash over here. So this account uh, rule is followed over here. The cash account is being credited as the rule says that credit what goes out. So in the second example, the interest and revenue uh, service revenue uh, are being credited. So this is a nominal account which says that uh, debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains. So these are these two are our income. So that is why these are being credited over here and cash account as we all know that it is a real account and uh, which says that uh, debit what comes in and credit what goes out. As we are having, uh, as we are receiving income, as we are receiving cash in the business, that is why cash is being debited in this uh, journal entry. So this is a normal journal entry that is being passed in the accounting.
So if we uh, moving on to the NetSuite application, uh, as we want to have a look of the those transactions from recording till it's reporting. So again, as we have done in our previous session, we will be going under the transaction. The first thing in the accounting cycle is to pass a journal entry, and the rest of the steps and the rest of the recording uh, reporting will be automatically taken up in the NetSuite application. So first we have to manually uh, create a journal entry for that we will be going under the transactions financials and make journal entry. So as we all know that this is a journal entry page we have to change the form first. Then we will select the subsidiary for which subsidiary we are want to create this journal entry for. You can see that the currency exchange rate has already been here. I will marking this entry as approved as I am an administrator. Date uh, uh, as this is a today's date, but we have to make this uh, this uh, these journal entries for the month of March. So we will be taking uh, here. Twenty fifth March, and you can see that the posting period has changed accordingly. As we have to pass this journal entry for the month of March, uh, if we go down. We have to select the account first. Like uh, we have taken over there the sales return account that is two zero four nine has been debited. The amount was twenty thousand. And we have to credit the cash account. We can provide memo here. So uh, this is a sales return transaction. The other transaction that we have is our revenue transaction, but that was for different date. But uh, we can take uh, just uh, just for a demo purpose, we can take that example in this form also. So our uh, that entry was cash account has been debited over there. That uh, was for fifteen thousand total. The first income, the first revenue was interest received. That was for ten thousand. The other account is service revenue. That was for five thousand. We have to provide a memo for it. So these are the entries that we have passed. Sales return account uh, is being debited and the cash account is credited. Credited as it is a sales return transaction and in the second transaction cash is being debited with fifteen thousand and uh, interest and revenue service revenue accounts are being uh, credited with uh, ten thousand and five thousand. And after doing this, we will click on save. So now we got the confirmation that our journal journal entry has been saved. This is the journal entry number, which we can remember for uh, the further proceeding. 
if we go down and see the journal entry so here we can see that uh, this is a sales return entry and this is a in revenue receipt entry so we have done with our part of journal entry moving towards the reporting of these transactions we will be going under the reports financials and first we will look into the general ledger so here we can see that uh, this uh, general ledger is for the month of march we do not have to change it so the the we are having the cash and the sales return transactions we have to remember the date for it i think that was for 15th uh, 25th of march so here we can see at the top of the uh, report we are having the sales return option that was that had taken place on 25th march and that was for 20000 here it is and if we click on it it will take us to the journal page this is the sales return report yes here we are having that interest received that we have received for 10000 here it is and uh, if we further go down we are having this 5000 for service revenue these are our expense uh, sorry income so we have seen that where the cash and the incomes that uh, that we have received are appearing in the general ledger if we move further ahead towards the trial balance so we will be going under the reports financials and trial balance So this is for the month of March. Uh, first, we will uh, look into the uh, cash. So here we will it will provide us the cash related transaction detail. So these are the two transactions that uh, we have made on twenty fifth of March. This is for the sales return, which is uh, uh, shown as uh, twenty thousand minus twenty thousand. And these are the incomes that have been received in the uh, business where that were for 15,000. If we click on it, if, uh, uh, both these transactions will take us to the journal page. So this is a cash uh, transaction. We will be going back to summary. The other uh, 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 options like uh, the incomes that have been received, we will be having a look at it. You can see sales return for 20,000 is also here that have been debited and is shown under the debit column for 20,000. If we further go down, so here is the interest received for 10,000 and the other income was service revenue which is here for 5,000. So these are the three uh, transaction cash, interest and service revenue uh, we have seen in the trial balance. The next report is the income statement. For, again for that, uh, for we will be going under the financials and income statement. So you can see that at the top of uh, this, uh, we are having this uh, interest receive option. Again, it will take us to just a minute, I will click on it. So this is the uh, interest received for 10,000. It, again, it will take us to the journal page. This is the service revenue transaction with 5,000. This is the sales return as uh, cash is going out of the business. So it is shown with the negative marking. So this is how these transactions are appearing in the income statement. The last statement that we are having is the balance sheet report. Financials and balance sheet. So this is the balance sheet for the month of March. Here you can see that the sales return is appearing on the, under the current asset as uh, the goods are returning in the business. So you can see that this uh, 20,000 is appearing over here. If we go down for having mm, a look on the cash, here the cash is, we click on it.
So as we have passed the journal entry on 25th of March, you can see that these are the two amounts that uh, are there for these uh, particular date. 20,000, this is for sales return and 15,000, these are for revenue received. So again, uh, I do not have to tell you that the minus value, why it is shown with the minus uh, negative and positive values. So let me tell you it again. So this is shown with a negative value just because uh, the cash is going out of the business as we are returning the sales so we have to return the cash so that we, which means that the cash is going out of the business and from these revenues the cash is coming mm -hmm. into the business that is why it is shown with a positive margin so this is how uh, we can have a look on the transaction into the balance sheet so towards the end of the session, in order to see the impact of this transaction, what is the impact of these two transactions on our balance sheet? So if we take the first uh, transaction, that is that is the sales return transaction. So here we have already discussed that uh, as cash is going out of the business, so it is shown, this arrow is shown that the cash is going uh, out of the business okay. and stock as we are returning, uh, as we are having the sales return. So the stock is coming into the business so stock is increased and cash will be decreased uh, from the second uh, uh, transaction that is revenue received we are having a cash in our business we are receiving cash that is why it is shown with a blue arrow and this arrow is an indication that cash is coming into the business so today also we have seen uh, we have taken a different transaction example and we we have seen how the numbers how the amounts and their accounts are appearing on the various various reports and uh, for that we have uh, initially we have to pass a journal entry and that amount and accounts will be uh, reflected in the other reports so in case of any questions that's all from my side in case of any questions queries and consultations you can write to us at www.bispsolutions.com thank you